Are you struggling to map your controller buttons? I've got you covered. In this video, I'll show you how you can use the modified controller button mapper script to make your life easier. So let's get started. Alright, so here I have my Unity project open which has been set up with the latest Meta XR Interaction SDK version 64 and it has been set up with all the player settings. You can also download this starter project from the link provided in the description below. You will also find another link for the script called controller mapper. Go ahead and download that and import it into Unity. Now before we begin, you should know that there are three different ways in which you can map your inputs while you're using the Meta SDK. First is by using virtual mapping, access as combined controllers. Here let's assume you want to access the trigger buttons on left and right controller. You can do that by using ovrinput.controller.touch followed by access1.primary index trigger to access the left hand trigger, access1.secondary index trigger to access the trigger on the right controller. The second way is by virtually mapping accessed as individual controllers. So in this case, you will use the sentence ovrinput.controller.left touch followed by access1d dot primary index trigger to access the left controller trigger and to access the right controller you'll use ovr input dot controller dot r touch and the same sentence once again that is access 1d dot primary index trigger and the third one is raw mapping so this directly exposes the controller so if you want to use the left trigger or register the left trigger you need to use ovr input dot raw access 1d dot l index trigger and to access the right controller trigger you need to use ovr input dot raw access 1d dot r index trigger so what's the difference between virtual mapping accessed as a combined controller and virtual mapping accessed as an individual controller let me explain this to you with the help of an example let us consider that you map the button a for jumping and map the button x for crouching now this is going to work as expected in case of accessed as a combined controller until you decide to keep your left controller down so remember that left controller is a primary controller and right controller is the secondary controller. Once you keep your left controller down, it's not going to get detected anymore and your right controller is going to be considered as a primary. So now if you press the A button, instead of jumping, it's going to crouch. So this can be solved by using it as an individual controller because in this case, you're going to assign left touch or right touch. So now even if you keep your left controller down and press A button, it is still going to jump. All right, so then what's the difference between virtual mapping and raw mapping? Here raw mapping means it will work with other supported controllers as well. So if the user decides to connect a gamepad, they will be able to use this as a source of input. Whereas if you use virtual mapping, you're restricting the users just to use the meta quest controllers. So I hope this clears all the confusion that you might have. Next, let's see how the controller mapper script works. All right, so here we are in Unity. Now we need to set up our scene with the camera rig. We can do this using the building blocks or using the OVR prefab from the project folder. For this video, I'm going to use the building blocks. So you can go to tools and select building blocks, add the camera rig. We also need to add the controller tracking. So I'm going to click on this. So here we have a scene with the camera rig and controller tracking. You can delete the main camera from here. Next, create an empty game object and let us call this as controller map and here let's add the controller mapper script and now you can use this to map any button to perform any action of your choice now before we set this up we need to create another script with the actions or the functions that we'd like to perform i've gone ahead and done that already i've created a script called object spawner and controller you can also get this script from the link given in the description below and if you open the script you can see here that we have functions to spawn the prefab to shoot the prefab move it rotate it and recolor it as well now one thing you might notice here that these all are generic functions i have not mapped the input in the script itself we'll be using the controller mapper to map the buttons so let's go back into unity and now to map the input add the script that you created or downloaded and on button click i want to do two things one is to spawn the prefab and the second one is to shoot the prefab so i've created two elements the first element i'm going to rename it as spawn and the second one is going to be shoot. So for spawning, I would like to choose the button A. Feel free to use any button. However, here you need to know that this is a multi-select function. So you can select A and X at the same time. So you can press A or X to spawn an object. But I'd just like to keep it at A. So I'm going to uncheck this. However, you can select different buttons to perform the same action. And here I want the button mode to be on button down. So that's only when I press the button, I want the object to spawn. And the callback. I'm going to add the script that we created and call the function spawn prefab. Similarly for shoot, I want to use the right index trigger to shoot it. 
and this is going to be on button down and the callback function is going to refer to this script and call the shoot prefab function. Now, next thing I would like to do is to move the prefab for that. I need vector two values, which I can get from the thumbstick continuous action. So here I'm going to create two items. The first one is going to be move and the second one is going to be rotate. So I'm going to move it using my right thumbstick and I'm going to rotate it using my left thumbstick. Note that the left touchpad and right touchpad are for the gamepad and not for our quest controllers. And let's add two callback functions. Reference to the script that we created and the function is going to be under dynamic vector 2 so it's going to dynamically get the vector 2 position and it's going to move it on your xz plane same thing for rotation as well here we want to use the uh, rotate function now just to demonstrate how we can use the 1d axis that is the trigger axis or the grip button axis dynamically so you can get the values from 0 to 1 with the starting position being 0 and when you press it entirely it's going to be 1 so you're going to get a float value now you can use this float value to do anything probably you want to shoot an object only when it crosses a certain threshold or any logic that you would like to use but in our case we're just going to use the function to recolor the object that we have so let's create a plus symbol call the title as recolor and i'm going to use the left hand trigger so the grip button and the callback function is going to refer to this script and call the recolor function all right now we need to set the parameters for our object spawner and controller it needs a prefab let's create a simple uh, 3d cube for this make sure to reset its position scale it all the way down to 0.1 in all the direction and since we are spawning and shooting we would like to add a rigid body so go ahead and add that here check is kinematic for now because once you spawn it it's going to get attached to some point i'm going to choose my right controller as the attach point and when you move around it has to move along with it if you have gravity and is kinematics checked then it's just going to fall down which we do not want and then he, we want the uh, collision detection to be continuous now go ahead and add it to your prefab folder if you don't have one you can create it remove it from your hierarchy select it and let's add this to our prefab now, like I said, the attach point is going to be my right controller. So I'm going to select it, drag and drop it in here. You can give a value to the force. I'm keeping it as 10, move speed as one and rotation speed as 100. All right, so we can save the script. Now you can test this from the simulator or you can connect uh, your headset using link or air link are connected using link right now and then we can press play and test it out all right so if i press the a button you can see that the cube has spawned i can use my grip button to change its color and now if i press the trigger button i can shoot it now uh, we'll we'll have to add a plane to see it move and rotate so let's do that really quickly so you can right click let's create a 3d object uh, plane and reset its transform all right, and now going back inside the headset, let's spawn another cube by pressing A and I'm going to shoot it so that, okay, I think the force is a lot. Uh, let's just shoot up. Okay, there we go. Now I can use my left controller to rotate and my right controller to move it. And once again, I can use the grip button to change its color. So I can change its color and then when I spawn the next object, the color stays and now I can shoot the next one, which is pretty cool now the main advantage of this script is that it is not hard coded somewhere during the development if you feel like you will have to change the buttons you can do it easily so let's say suppose you want to spawn it not using a but b you can just do this and uh, and it's as simple as that all right so that's it for this video if you found this video to be helpful i'd highly appreciate it if you can leave a like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one